Cuba traigo es un ritmo sabroso De Cuba dulce caña y rico ron Café como no hay otro en el Caribe y el más chitado golpe del bongo Por Cuba tengo la sangre caliente What's going on? It's the Big Rig Bull, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer Richard Alexander here on a Monday. Um, not much to report today. Um, still, you know, sifting through paperwork and uh, shredding and scanning and doing all that type of stuff. Uh, that will probably be what the majority of this week consists of. Um, we will continue uh, the parts and accessories for ne uh, the necessary parts. Parts and accessories necessary for safe operations, part three today, um, as a board session. Um, there's not, other than that, it's not too much going on. I'm just working as I usually do here by myself. Um, but I do have one thing. This, my friend, is a winner. Okay? Very delicious. Six in a pack. It's only like $10, so you're, you're paying like $1.80, $1.75 or something for each bowl. The FMCSA, uh, by the way, is still looking for uh, driver input when it comes to detention times at your, uh, at your loading and dropping off points. So if you are a truck driver, you should definitely submit that uh, to the FMCSA because they're looking for your input to make your job easier. Also another thing, the FMCSA uh, through its rulemaking ability is scheduling the new hours of service proposal date for July 31st. Of course, this date is fluid. It's subject to it's subject to change, and it probably will change. I tell you what. One thing that concerns me is the fact that uh, trailer orders have fallen to uh, three-year lows, or the lowest they've been in three years. Uh, trailer cancellations have also arisen. The thing about transportation and the thing about trucking in general is that trucking, like a lot of other um, necessary industries in our nation, is usually indicative of what is happening in the economy. So if trailer cancellations are taking place or trailer orders are going down, that possibly means that we are in store for another recession possibly or some type of economic downturn. It will be interesting to watch um, as the presidential election unfolds and a, a president is eventually elected whether or not our economy uh, you know, dips because of that or if we somehow rebound from all of this. I don't really know what to think of it all honestly but um, like I said keep your eye out on that. Keep your eye out or you know uh, what's going on in the trucking industry because of that. Um, like I said before, I'm already uh, eyeing what's going on with XBO Logistics, and I'm paying attention to the rest of the market as well. Uh, especially the um, the rise of Amazon and its you know freight delivery uh, system. Because like I said before, the way this world is going, eventually all of us are going to end up working for. Amazon or Google or one of these companies are fighting against them um, because they are eating up jobs and paying people lower wages across the board. Um, personally, I think we're living in a gig economy. I don't think we've ever really truly come out of that. Uh, but like I said before, trucking is so important, it's so vital to uh, our nation because it really moves our nation. I mean, goods are produced, they may be produced in other countries, they may be produced in America, but they all have to arrive at your doorstep somehow, some way. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe this is episode
episode 36. We are discussing part three of parts and accessories necessary for safe operations here in uh, the state of Texas when it comes to commercial motor vehicles. Today we're going to basically talk about uh, tires, sleeper berths, and exhaust systems. Uh, it looks like we have maybe one more day left to discuss uh, this part 393 and then we'll be moving on to another section. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to briefly, uh, well just address cargo securement. We've already addressed cargo securement in a previous vlog. If you haven't uh, tuned into that or if you haven't watched it and you're following along with this, you can just zoom back to one of the previous vlogs and I think uh, I've covered cargo securement uh, pretty pretty thoroughly. Uh, the only thing that I really want to say about it is obviously um, you know the cargo has to be secured before you know you pull off from wherever you uh, ship wherever you're wherever you're picking it up uh, from. So I'm not going to go into the rules of that. Uh, if you have questions about that feel free to call me or like I said before just tune in to the vlog or look back on one of the previous uh, one of the previous vlogs. Today we're going to focus on tires. Um, so tires are covered in 393.75. Um, obviously, no commercial uh, motor vehicle uh, can have a tire on it that has a bottom ply or belt material exposed. Uh, there can be no tread or sidewall separation. Uh, and there can be no flat or audible leak from the tires. Uh, additionally, there can be no cut exposing body ply or belt material uh, from tires as well. All of this is common sense material uh, when it comes to tires, but you know it is law, so it needed to be iterated uh, to you all. Um, the next uh, thing is at least, uh, well, when it comes to front wheels, at least four thirty seconds of an inch tread groove pattern must be present on any uh, measurement of a major tread groove for the front wheels. Um, now, this means that there can be no measurements on the, uh, where the tire bars are, where their humps or uh, fillets are located. Okay? Um, additionally, there can be no regrooved, recapped, or retreaded tires on the front wheels. Um, if there are regrooved tires and they're not used on the front wheels, then they have to have a uh, low capacity, basically, of 4,920 pounds, you know, or 2,232 kilograms. Um, tire loading restrictions are capped by the sidewall tire restrictions. So, I mean, this is just this is just common sense. When you look at uh, your tire on your car, it has a uh, a load on it, a code. The same thing is pretty much present for the tire. Um, you know, you can't have a load on there that's larger than the sidewall uh, restrictions. Are those listed in the Federal Motor Vehicle? safety standards uh, number 119 unless there is a uh, special state permit that has been issued to you and you are driving at a reduced speed uh, of operation of 50 miles per hour. Um, the exception to that is manufactured homes. Manufactured homes has its own little uh, set of rules which I won't be going into today. I may make that another vlog, but I won't be going into that today. So if you have questions about manufactured homes, you can either look that up under uh, 393.75 or you can just you know, give me a call. Um, when it comes to tire inflation pressure, no operation of a commercial motor vehicle with cold inflation pressure less than the specified uh, amount for the carry load can be present pretty much. And uh, if you are dealing with heat buildup in a tire, then the cold inflation pressure will be measured by subtracting the inflation buildup factor. Basically what that is is that if you have a max load that's less than 4,000 pounds, your, the, the uh, cold inflation pressure amount you're going to subtract is 5 PSI. If there is a max load greater than 4,000 pounds, you're going to subtract 15 uh, PSI. So moving along to sleeper berth, sleeper berths are covered in 393.76. The dimensions of a sleeper berth vary depending on the age of the vehicle, but we're going to assume that the vehicle that you're going to be driving or in uh, operationally using um, is going to be 
somewhat manufactured after uh, September 30th, 1975. Okay, so I, I didn't list all the other dates because those are for much older trucks, and I'm assuming that at this point everyone is driving a vehicle that more than likely was produced uh, after 1975. Um, the length uh, of a sleeper berth has to be at least 75 inches. The width has to be 24 inches. The height has to be 24 inches as well. The shape on or after uh, January 1st, 1953, generally speaking, has to be a rectangular shape, although there's an exception for the horizontal corners, and the roof corners may be rounded to a radii not exceeding 10 and a half inches. Okay, when it comes to the access of a sleeper berth, uh, the exit and entrance cannot be hindered. The occupant must be able to freely uh, get in and out of the sleeper berth. When it comes to the location, uh, it cannot be installed in or on a semi-trailer or full trailer other than a house trailer. Okay, um, it must be compartmentalized after January 1st, 1953. The sleeper berth uh, must be located immediately adjacent to the cab and securely fixed. Uh, the opening or the doorway exit must be at least 18 inches high and 36 inches wide after January 1st, 1963. When it comes to the equipment uh, in a sleeper berth, uh, there are a few things that you need to know. Uh, number one is that it must have adequate bed clothing and blankets and either springs and a mattress or an inner spring mattress uh, or a cellular rubber or flexible foam mattress at least four inches thick or it can have a mattress that's filled with fluid to prevent uh, bottoming out when the vehicle is in motion. All right. Um, obviously every uh, sleeper berth needs to be adequately ventilated. Um, you know, uh, it needs to protect you against exhaust, against fuel leaks, against exhaust heat and it must have a restraint system that is capable of uh, dealing with 6,000 pounds of force to, uh, from the front of the vehicle, okay? Um, if you are a truck driver and you are dealing with this type of issue, you need to contact an attorney uh, immediately. There was a truck driver uh, recently who passed away, I believe in West Virginia, because his uh, super berth was not properly um, heating and he uh, passed away, I believe, um, because it was just too cold in this sleeper berth, and that's, that's completely unacceptable. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is exhaust systems 393.83. Um, the exhaust system discharge uh, must be located where it's not likely to burn or damage electrical wiring, the fuel supply, and no combustible part of the vehicle. It's common sense, but like I said before, it needs to be iterated because it's law and you need to know these things. Um, the exhaust system or discharge uh, cannot be located immediately below the fuel tank or the fuel tank filler pipe. The exhaust system may not be temporarily repaired with a patch or wrap material. Uh, the exhaust pipe and muffler must be securely attached fastened to the, and fastened to the vehicle. Uh, the exhaust system may not leak or discharge at any point forward of or directly below the driver or the sleeper berth compartment. Um, if you're dealing with a truck or a tractor, the discharge must take place to the rear of the cab or above and near the rear of the cab. Uh, and the last thing is if you're dealing with a, ga a gasoline injured, I'm sorry, if you're dealing with a gasoline injured powered bus, the discharge from the exhaust pipe must take place no further, uh, than, no further forward than six inches uh, of the rearmost point of the vehicle. Um, and if you're dealing with a diesel powered bus, it must be 15 inches from the rearmost point or to the rear of all the doors and windows designed to be open, um, not including the emergency exits. This, I think, includes episode 36 um, and part three of parts and accessories necessary for safe operations. This is the Big Read Bull signing out. Hoping you have a blessed day. Take it easy.